Hello everybody, this is Mukil Chabda. In this video, we will be discussing the next problem of the ongoing series uh, which in which we are discussing the educational round 87 and in this video, we will be discussing the problem B which is ternary string. So without further ado, let's get to the problem. The problem says that we are given a string S such that each of its character is either 1, 2 or 3. Okay? So there are three possibilities for each character, each uh, index i. Uh, you have to choose the shortest contiguous substring of S such that it contains each of these characters at least once. Okay, so the shortest one, uh, uh, the shortest substring in which all of these characters have basically occurred at least once. Okay, uh, a contiguous substring of string S is a string that can be obtained from S by removing some of the characters from the beginning and the sum of the characters of the ending. You can read it, it's uh, definition of a standard substring. So the input input format is uh, format is like that. We'll be having a number of test cases, which can be up to twenty thousand. And for each test case, we'll be having a string s, and its length can be from one to two hundred thousand. And it is guaranteed that each of the characters will either be one, two, or three. And it is also guaranteed that the sum of lengths over uh, of of strings over all test cases will not exceed two hundred thousand. Okay. For each test case, we have to print one integer, uh, the length of the shortest contiguous substring that contains all three characters, one, two, and three, at least once. Uh, and if there is no such substring, we'll print zero instead. You can see in this case, uh, if there are all threes, there isn't any one or two, so it isn't possible, so we'll print zero. Also in this case, there isn't any three, so it means that we can't really achieve the target because we will never get a three, okay? So in this case, also print zero. Otherwise, we will have to print the smallest substring that contains all three characters at least once. But I hope the question is clear. So I will be discussing the solution uh, now on. I will be discussing uh, one of the possible solutions. So you can uh, pause and think it around for yourself if you want to give it a try. Okay. So what I will be doing here is I will be using uh, something called a sliding window technique and uh, I will be maintaining you know a current substring you know at every point I'll, I'll have a substring uh, let's say from index l to r initially i'll take l equals to r equals to zero so the first uh, digit will be basically my substring initially so uh, in the current uh, you know scenario if my substring is l to r what i'll do is i'll just say increase l you know uh, let's say l led to l plus plus if the current frequency, let's say uh, we have something called current frequency where we'll be having the current frequencies of 1, 2 and 3 uh, that will be for this example the frequencies of 1, 2 and 3 between this uh, you know subarray, uh, sorry substring L to R if the current frequency of S of L is greater than 1 we can say L plus plus because if this is greater than 1 it means that there is some another index from L plus 1 to R such that it contains S of L so we don't really need you know this l value we can uh, make piece with a smaller substring we can uh, basically do l plus plus right so in this manner we'll be uh, checking for all particular you know uh, r values that what is the smallest substring that we can have uh, such that there is no basically redundancy uh, for example, we can uh, try and uh, run my algorithm for this case. I know it is uh, very much hazy for now. Let's say initially our R value and L value is 0, right? And we know that the frequency of uh, S of L is going to be 1 because uh, frequency of 1 is going to be 1 initially, right? Because my L and R both are 0. So 1 is the only one. Uh, so frequency 1 equals to 1. And after that, when I move my R to R to you know 1, I'll be just increasing R in each iteration when my r increases to this uh, 1 then i know that fq of 1 will be equals to 1 only and fq of 2 will also become 1 then uh, my l value will be 1 and i'll see that the fq of s of uh, you know 0 which is 1 is not greater than 1 so i'll just say that l should remain as it is then whenever i uh, keep increasing r uh, my L value will be will remain this only because you know that the frequency of 1 is just 1. When I will reach here, when my R value will reach here, my frequency of 2 would have one become 4 by then, right? Uh, and when I reach here, my frequency of 1 would have become 2, right? Because I will be uh, increasing the frequencies of S of R as well, well when I will be increasing the R value, right? So when I am at this particular index, right, uh, I will see that 
my you know frequency of s of l is greater than one, which is two. So I'll do I'll do l plus plus, and I'll uh, before doing l plus plus, I'll also decrease its frequency to one, and then I'll come at this guy, and then also I'll see that its frequency is four, so I can do l plus plus. So then I'll come here. Still, I see that the frequency is greater than one, so go one more step ahead. Still, it is greater than one. Go one more step ahead. So I'll become I'll be uh, coming here. You know, when every before incrementing r, I'll check at every step if the you know uh, frequencies of one, two, and three are greater than zero. If if in the current bracket, if in the current window, I have one, two, and three, all of three, all all three of them present, then I can just take minimum with my uh, you know global variable answer to see if this can be a possible answer. If not, I can just uh, increment my r value. Now after this case. I'll again increment my R value. I'll come to this particular index, and by when I'll be here, uh, I'll just write it down here. My FQ of one would be one, and FQ of two will also be one, because we have you know increased the L values so that the frequency values are one only, and then FQ of three will also become one because my R value have just increased to this, and in this case L value won't increase right because I know that the L value is here and the frequency of you know l is uh, frequency of s of l f of s of l is exactly one so then uh, r value will become uh, this one and then this one and then this one this one this one this one it will keep on moving because uh, it it will keep on moving and the l value will not increase because we haven't encountered encountered any other two just frequency of 3 will be keep on increasing so when we'll be there at the last three, the frequency of three will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess so. It will become seven by the end, and uh, then again when we'll increase r, we'll see that the frequency of you know two will become two. But now in this case, we'll see that the frequency of s of s of l is uh, actually greater than one. So I'll say frequency of s of s of l minus minus. So it will become uh, you know. One and uh, L will become L, L will be you know at this particular index and now again I'll take the minimum of answer comma R minus L plus one but I know this will be a, a larger case as compared to this one where we have just three letters right I hope the intuition is clear I hope this uh, dry running of this test case helped a bit in understanding what I am basically trying to do here. So uh, for every R, I'm basically trying to reduce uh, all of the redundancy from the left. I am, uh, you know, basically increasing the L values as far as possible so that there is, you know, uh, no such uh, number that basically, uh, you know, could have been avoided by increasing the value of L. Okay, that doesn't make sense. I'll just say that again. What I'm basically trying to do here is that for every R value, I'm trying to increase L as far as I can to decide whether I can increase L or not. You know, I want to increase L because increasing L will basically reduce my length and I want my length to be minimum. So what I'm trying to do here is to decide whether I can increase L or not. I'll just check that whatever is the number that is present on, uh, you know, L index. Is it also present somewhere between L plus 1 to R? If yes, then I don't really need S of L, right? So I can simply do L plus plus. If not, you know, if, if, if L, is, L is the only, you know, source of getting that particular number between L to R. So I really need it I uh, because I need all of the three, you know, numbers at least once. Then I'll say for now I should not do L plus plus because it's possible that I do not have that particular number anywhere in the future, right? So yeah, uh, this is the basic uh, scenario. This this is the basic algorithm that I'll be implementing now. Okay. So let's just copy the simple test cases for now. Yeah. So take input of the number of test cases. Then uh, we'll be having a string. Let's say s do c in s, and I can have you know a count vector, uh, not exactly vector, an, an array of size four, which can be initialized by zero initially. Okay, uh, four because my indi indices are going to be you know one two three and so for that I need us uh, need an array of size four. I hope it's understandable. So yeah, uh, now I'll say that my L value equals to zero initially. Okay, and I would say count of s of zero minus zero plus plus right because I have, okay let's not do this for now. I'll, I'll just tell you why. 
what i'll be doing is i'll be iterating for my r value r value can be 0 it can be less than n plus plus r right so i'm iterating for my r value r can be from 0 to n minus 1 for every r i'll be trying to you know get as minimum length possible uh, according to the rule that i just told you so that uh, you know the, the the s of l is such that it is not present anywhere from l plus 1 to r right so what i'll uh, initially do is i'll say count of s of r okay uh, to do that firstly i need digit right the digit we can't really get from s of r i'll have to subtract zero from it because they'll be in the form of characters so if i subtract the zero character from it, it i'll get get it in the form of integer okay so what i'll be doing is count of bridge plus plus initially and uh, then i'll say if count of s of okay uh, i'll say and left dig equals to s of uh, okay even uh, let's say if while while we'll do it we'll say while uh, count of s of l minus zero it, th this is tell us what the uh, left most digit currently is is greater than one it means it is also present somewhere between l plus one to r i'll say l plus plus okay now uh, when the l has you know have been incremented as far it could have been we just check if all of the numbers are you know basically present or not if count of one and count of two and count of three i'll say answer equals to minimum of answer comma r minus l plus one because the length of the current bracket is going to be r minus l plus one now before it i just initialize my answer by let's say uh, we know that the maximum possible length can be 2 into 10 raised to power 5 so let's say 1 is 6 okay so after this what i'll be doing is i'll just check if my answer value is still 1 is 6 i don't know whether it is work or not i'll just see because 1 is 6 is actually a double value okay uh, we know that if the value of answer is still 1 is 6 it means that it, it never entered entered in this uh, if condition if it never entered this if condition it means that there isn't any sub uh, not sub yeah sub if there isn't any substring available such that it has uh, 1 2 and 3 at least once so I'll just say answer equals to 0 because in that case we have to print 0 and I'll just print my answer right let's see if it this if this works okay yeah so one possible mistake that we made is uh, we want n equals to let's say s dot length okay and now we can also say int answer equals to n plus one and we can just check if it's n plus one i'm initializing initializing my answer with n plus one because it can never be n plus one uh, the maximum answer possible is n right okay it should have been yeah let's just try and run it now okay this is very very weird uh, it says minus 40 what could have been the mistake let's try l is 0 okay s get c in s then r is going for every possible digit and you saying digit okay okay i forgot to do you know count of s of l minus 0 minus minus that has to be actually deleted from the frequency vector right i forgot to do that okay so now it should be correct double three double four zero zero four right let's try and submit it problem is b yeah it has been accepted okay so i'll just go through the code once uh, again to make it understandable even more so take the input of s this count array will tell me the frequency of 1 2 and 3 in the current window that i am exploring right 
and initially i'll say that my l value equals to 0 i'll just go with the best case because l value can't be really less than 0 right uh, and uh, n is length and answer has been initially initialized with n plus 1 because this is the greatest possible uh, the, the greatest possible answer can be n so i just initialized by n plus 1 okay then uh, i'll iterate for my r values but can be my right values of the substring that this can be either 0 1 2 up to 2 n minus 1 right now for every r value i initially took the best possible scenario of l which is uh, you know 0 now for every r i'll be just trying to increment the l value as long as i can and when i can increment the l value I can do it when uh, s of l is actually present in some another index from n plus 1 to r. If that's the case, then the then the you know uh, count of uh, s of l minus 0 uh, will be greater than 1, right? So because it is present in some another index also. So I'll just say, I'll just decrement its count by 1 because I don't really need this particular l value to be part, part of my substring and I'll just say l plus plus, okay? and uh, uh, i'll be just doing it uh, while this is greater than one i'll be incrementing the l value as long as i can and after this uh, if all of the three uh, you know basically numbers are present i'll just take the minimum now uh, some of you might be wondering about what exactly is the time complexity some of you might get confused and think that it's l uh, n square because this loop is running n times and this loop is can also run up to n times uh, in total okay so to uh, get you out of the confusion uh, that's cool that this uh, loop is running n times, but this loop actually uh, doesn't run n time every time in this loop. Okay, uh, to make it sound more simpler, we have the L value initially as zero, right? And uh, uh, this this L value has been set zero outside outside of this for loop, right? So in this for loop, uh, this while loop can never go beyond n minus one. That's what I'm trying to say. This this you know. Uh, L value can never go beyond n minus one because whenever the value of L is equal to R, you know, when the whenever the L value increases to an extent that it uh, becomes equal to the current value of R, say for example, we know that the only uh, digit present within the current window is going to be S of R or say S of L, right? Uh, and its frequency is also going to be one, so it can't really go beyond R, and the maximum value R can take is n minus one. So because the l value always increases and it never decreases it can increase and increase and increase and go to up to n minus 1 in the maximum possible scenario uh, and that scenario will be can be possibly the case when we have all threes in this scenario also it will go up to n minus 1 and so this while loop will run in total n times maximum or maybe say n minus 1 times maximum so the time complexity we can say is not n square it's n plus n right because this internal loop is going to run n times max and this is uh, going to run n times exactly so it is bigger of 2n sort of thing uh, which is uh, same as saying bigger of n right so i hope the solution is clear uh, it has been accepted so even if uh, still there is some doubt you can post on a comment i'll try to help you out okay so this was it for this video guys, thank you, see you guys in the next one.